Hi, Cheryl Kagan here. Very proud to be the senator for Gaithersburg and Rockville. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday night, and my committee is still in hearings. I wanted to give you a very quick update on the bunch of stuff that I've been working on. Yesterday, I had three of my bills related to 911. I'm hoping they're going to move this year. They deal with protecting our 911 specialists, the courageous women and men who work hard to save lives and property every day under the headset, our other first responders, police, fire, and paramedics. Um, also, m increasing the penalties for anyone who messes with our 911 centers and blocks it so that others can't get in. Today started off with Governor Westmore uh, testifying in our committee on one of his top priorities that he talked about for months on the campaign trail, which was a service option after high school um, or the equivalent, because service is sticky, because it creates a commitment to community and builds relationships. He did a great job, and I'm confident that the Senate and House will move that forward, and we're going to start the first of its kind in the nation. Uh, today, we have also, uh, what we're doing right now is Maryland's messed up 529 college savings program, and we're hearing from endless numbers of broken-hearted parents who invested life savings in their children's college education so as to try to prevent them, avoid it from the, them from having to um, have college loan debt, and, uh, and the system got really messed up and we need to fix it and help these families afford their higher education for their kids. Um, we've also been dealing with green energy. We have so many uh, different issues that we face every day. Uh, tomorrow we have a voting session and two of my election bills are on the voting session. I'm pretty confident that they will both move forward. I have eight bills related to elections. Six of them have been heard, one more is being heard on Friday, and then I've got one more after that. I just wanted to take a moment because I shoved this thing in my car in West Virginia. I was at a national uh, national conference of state legislatures, a uh, conference on elections. I was very privileged to be invited and to serve on a panel. And as you can see, the panelists are here. We have to tell a little about ourselves, and so it, it captures my tab soda and the fact that I'm a nationally ranked Scrabble player. But uh, the panel was about talking about elections because there's been such misinformation, disinformation, and so we were talking about how to make sure that our constituents and the press and everyone has the right information when we talk about our elections. So, and these are from me and from others others on the panel. Don't patronize people. Give them the facts. Um, make sure that we don't use acronyms. Speak plain English. I talk about that every day because we want to make sure you understand what we're doing. And when we use insider speak, you get lost. I get lost when people use their, their uh, insider language and stuff. Um, use speak in plain language. And we don't want to talk about fixing our elections because I can tell you in Maryland, the elections are not broken. We're just improving them. We're making them better um, and making them more transparent and all that. But they are working very well. So, um, so that if we know the truth, we have to share it. Don't hide things. Be transparent. Make sure that folks know what's going on. If there's a question, a concern, a process that can be improved, let's we'll make sure we do it, but talk about it. Um, we need to educate voters as to what's going on so they are well informed. They know their rights and they know how to cast a ballot. Um, we got to make sure we reach people where they are. So whether that's on social media, through emails, through snail mailers, on a ballot, uh, a sample ballot, however it is, we need to make sure we're talking to voters. Um, and different states have different laws. So what you hear about what's happening in one state is probably not remotely going to apply in Maryland, so we have to make sure that we're being accurate for our own states. Um, and when we talk about uh, the other party, candidates of another party, or even with our own party, and we, and we badmouth or we criticize in just ugly and personal ways, it really reduces people's confidence in politics, in candidates, in the voting systems, in the process. We've got to do better than that. And so I always say, you know, we can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable while we're doing it. Uh, transparency is an issue that I've worked on a lot in government and in elections in particular. Um, and we've talked about that. 
and where we can, let's be bipartisan and we all can agree that we want great elections. We all want our own candidates to win, but ultimately we need the system to work well. And uh, I, uh, this was definitely me. Internet delivered ballots are a hassle. They are time consuming. You'll hear me talk, talk about that even more on in Friday's hearing. And uh, just the reminder that voting is a right and, uh, and people should make sure that they implement that right, that they take advantage ever, always. And we have to run legislation through our election officers uh, because they're the experts. And while we're pretty smart on this stuff, they do it every day, and so we have to make sure that we collaborate, cooperate, and listen. And it has been my honor to work with state and county election officials uh, as I have crafted my legislation, as well as folks like Common Cause, the League of Women Voters, Black Girls Vote, Disability Rights Maryland, the NAACP, and so many other advocacy organizations. And that's why I think we've got eight really good election bills. So with that, uh, elections, 911, community service, higher education, and so much more. Thank you for watching. Check me out on social media, media uh, and my uh, weekly podcast, Kibitzing with Kagan, are always fun and interesting. And this week's uh, is with the chair of the Senate Budget and Taxation Committee, Guy Gazzoni. We talk about the new Senate uh, budget process, the new legislative budget process, and some of what he's expecting from our $63 billion budget that was just proposed by Governor Westmore and Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay well, stay in